Hey everyone, welcome back to Chin Up Scriptures. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Um, I do apologize for the last video. I'm not sure why it cut off randomly, um, but I do pray that you were able to be blessed by um, what I was able to share on patience in the last few videos. Um, a few um, weeks ago, I guess now, um, I really sought the Lord for direction and just... Um, guidance on something that I had been um, trusting him for for a long time and I really did believe in my spirit that there was some sort of delay and really the question to God was um, what was causing that delay and I decided to do a fast and um, just really just get in the presence of God and figure out what the issue was and the Holy Spirit is just so incredibly amazing you know right from day one um, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I had a spirit of unbelief. And I was just like flabbergasted. Um, for really all of my Christian life, I've always thought that if I was a woman of faith, that it, auto it automatically meant, sorry, that um, I also was someone who believed God. And the Lord really took me through a process where he showed me that you can be someone that um, has faith and even has matured and complete and strong faith, um, but still have a spirit of unbelief. And, you know, I don't, I really want to share what the Holy Spirit gave me during this time because I don't want any of you to be in a situation where you are trusting God for something and it's delayed because um, you don't believe God. You know, it's, it's very clear that God cannot operate in a place of unbelief. You know, the Bible says that Jesus went back to his hometown, Mark chapter 6, um, to minister to his people, and they took offense at him. And um, the Bible says that uh, he cannot do many mighty miracles there because of their unbelief. And the Bible makes note that Jesus marveled at their unbelief. He was just kind of like, you guys know me. You of all people should believe the things that I say, that I'm able to do the things that I am claiming um, that I'm able to do. But that was not the case, unfortunately. So... We're going to go bit by bit. I just want to lay a foundation. I want us to talk about first, you know, what is faith? And then we'll get into belief versus unbelief. Um, how do we know, like the different kinds of unbelief? How do we know that we are truly walking in a place of belief and faith in God and not just, you know, thinking that we are, right? Um, and then we'll talk about rest. We'll, we'll just talk about everything, but we'll just take it bit by bit so that we really do understand this thing called faith and this thing called unbelief and how we can really walk in faith and belief and see the manifestation um, of the promises that God has already made available to us by grace, right, through faith in Christ. So let's start with, okay, what is faith? And so, you know, we have to go back to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So in the King James Version, um, the author of Hebrews says that, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The version that I kind of grew up with that I like memorized was in the NIV. Um, and here it says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for in certain of what we do not see. So you can see here immediately that faith does not rely on our natural senses. So, you know, as human beings, we taste, we see, we hear, we, you know, we feel, we touch. Um, but faith doesn't rely on any of those things, you know, quite literally the, the Bible here is saying that, you know, it's the things that we cannot see. It's the things that, um, we're hoping for, but we're just, we're certain that God can do it. We're certain that God has done it. Um, so you can quite literally think of faith as your sixth sense in the spirit realm, right here in the natural realm. Um, faith definitely has a role, but you and I know that a lot of times we tend to kind of um, rely more on our natural senses than our faith. But just understand that faith is not only for the spiritual realm. Faith is is to be worked out right here in the natural realm as well to see the manifestations of what God has released in the spirit for each and every one of us. Um, so that's one thing. And then also going along with your five senses, right? Um, your five senses allow you to reason. 
Right. They allow you to kind of look at a situation and think about it in a more rational type of way. I don't know if y'all have ever been driving and you'll see like a stray dog, right? And um, the stray dog will literally just like, I mean, there's like a like traffic on both sides of the street and the dog will just zoom across the street and people are like swerving and like slamming on their brakes trying to avoid eating this poor dog. As human beings, we know better, right? Okay, so we know it's a busy street. We know like, okay, we need to wait until the light is red and then we see the man, the walking man that signals to us, okay, you can cross the street. But even with that, because people are crazy, you still look both ways before you cross the street, right? That's the ability that we have in our senses to reason and to rationalize and then make a decision. The thing though, is that when it comes to things of the spirit, we still tend to um, depend on our senses and we still tend to depend um, on our reasoning instead of um, depending on our faith, which, which does not have anything to do with our natural senses. You know, I've heard it said this way that faith does not reason. Faith does not look at a situation and say, okay, well, you know, I can see how God can work it out in this situation. No, faith is just like, you know what, God? This looks impossible, but I know that with you, all things are possible as long as I believe. We're going to get into that later. Um, so faith does not, again, does not rely on natural senses. Faith does not reason. Faith does not try to rationalize. Because once you start to do all that, you begin to rely on your own strength and your own understanding. And then you, you remove your total dependency on God, which faith completely... Um, which faith completely, uh, which which is how faith works, right? It's, it's just by um, total dependence on God. Okay, so I want us to look at a very classic example of this. Um, I want you, I want us to go to Romans chapter uh, four, verse verses nineteen through twenty two. Okay, and this is basically um, Paul is just exemplifying the faith of Abraham. You know, we know Abraham as the father of faith and how he believes God, how he gave glory to God, and how um, something that seemed, <laughs> even in today's terms, uh, to be very impossible, we saw that a whole nation came from this man, Abraham, and this woman, Sarah. So going to verse 19, the Bible says, and not being weak in faith, he, that is Abraham, did not consider his own body. He didn't reason, he didn't rationalize, he didn't pay attention to his senses, to his natural senses. Um, since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. You know, they say that thanksgiving is the language of faith. There's something that you're trusting God for. You know in your spirit, you know by faith, you know because you believe that God has made that provision. Uh, it doesn't mean that you've seen the physical manifestation, but you, because you're so convinced, so the Bible says that, that Abraham was convinced you know, that he did not consider, but because you're, you believe so much in your God and you're so convinced, it's like you're already at that place of, God, thank you. God, I praise you. God, I worship you because you've given me this thing that I have trusted in you for. Again, thanksgiving is the language of faith. So it says here that, um, you know, so we see that Abraham started speaking that language of faith as the Bible says that he gave glory to God for something that yet had not manifested. Um, and being fully convinced that what he, that is, you know, that what God had promised, that God was able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Um, again, this is classic example of someone who did not rely on his five cents. And I, and I know that was hard because I know, especially when God told um, him to change his name to Abraham, you know, father of many nations, and you like, where are your kids at? <laughs> you know, like, I don't see no kids running around here. You know, it took a lot of faith. It took a lot of Abraham believing God and taking God at his word. It took a, a lot of Abraham not considering that his body was dead, that Sarah's womb was dead, but yet, you know, it was going to be through Sarah 
that he was going to have a child, that they were going to birth a whole nation, the nation of Israel. Um, it took a lot of Abraham just standing in faith. You know, and so this kind of makes you feel like, oh, hey, you know, because I, I also thought like, you know, Abraham, because we call him the father of faith. Right. Um, I thought like, well, you know, like not everyone, not everyone has like that kind of like Abraham type of faith because his faith was so great and what have you. But if you really look at how even Jesus describes faith, you'll see that it's really not so much about how much faith you have, but the quality and the maturity of your faith. So. Uh, looking at Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 3, in the King James Version, um, the Bible says, God hath, or God has, dealt to every man the measure of faith. So the way that I understand this is that, oh, excuse me, um, when you are born again, when you give your life to Christ, um, you don't, you know, you, you, you're, you're giving, you're not, like, say, say like, like we measure faith, like say we're measuring faith in leaders. It's not like God gives you five leaders of faith and your goal is to get to 10,000 leaders of faith. No, the faith that that you receive, right? Because it's already made available. The faith that you receive when you're born again and when you give your life to Christ is all the faith that you will ever need. Um, but then you might be like, well, what about, you know, Jesus says mustard, mustard seed, uh, faith, right? So let, let's go to that scripture. So that's found in um, in Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. No, in uh, in Matthew chapter 17, uh, verse 20. So here, and we're going to get into this later. Um, Jesus had just been transfigured, and while he was on the mountain being transfigured, um, a, a, a boy a boy had brought. I mean, sorry, a father had brought his boy um, to Jesus' disciples. Um, for them to cast an unclean spirit out of the boy. And unfortunately, um, they were not able to. And when Jesus came down um, from the mountain, um, he was, you know, like the, everyone came to him and they were like, you know what, this is what happened. And the boy's father was like, I brought my son to your disciples to cast out this unclean spirit. Um, but they weren't able to, and Jesus was not happy, right? He was, he was just not happy that the disciples didn't have enough faith and didn't have enough belief, more importantly, to cast out this unclean spirit. And so after Jesus had cast out the spirit, um, the disciples came to him. Because, you know, if you, if you read the Bible carefully, the, the disciples had already experienced the power of God to do these things, to cast out devils, to heal people, all of it. So it was kind of like, they were like, you know, why were we not able to cast out this unclean spirit. And this is what Jesus said to them. He said, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. And again, we're going to get into unbelief. Don't, we're going to discuss unbelief, trust me. Um, for shortly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. You know, I always look at this as kind of like, you know, you can have tiny, tiny, tiny faith and you can do great things, which is true, right? But again, to go along with that is really not so much how much, it's really not so much how much faith you have. It's the quality of your faith. It's the maturity of your faith. Um, and so then the question is, okay, then how how is your faith matured? How do you get to a... Uh, a faith that is, you know, that is that is a quality faith that allows you to say to a mountain, you know, move from here to there, that allows you to look at any kind of impossible situation like Abraham and Sarah and still see the manifestation um, of God's promises to you. And the Holy Spirit led me to James chapter 1, um, verses 2 through 4. So this is what James says. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Remember what we talked about with patience, right? Patience is being consistent. It's being constant in the things of God, no matter what happens around you, okay? Uh, verse four, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I also want to read it in the NIV version. So here it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of many kinds, 
because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And that really does go along with patience, right? Because if you, when you are patient, not if, when you are patient, um, you still are committed to God. You are still trusting God. You're still in the Word. You're still praising. You're still worshiping. You're still thanking God. You're still committed to the ministry or ministries that God has called you to at your church or in your community, right? No matter what happens. And isn't that along the line of perseverance, right? Like patience and perseverance really do go hand in hand. Verse four, let perseverance or patience finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Um, so how do you get to that complete faith? How do you get to that matured faith? How do you get to that, you know, that quality faith is by trials. But it's not just going through the trials. It's going through the trials and still deciding, still choosing to stand in the word, still choosing to trust God, still choosing to believe God and to take God at his word. Um, because a lot of us, you know, a lot of people will go through trials and once that trial hits, they are out. They're just like, you know what, God, I don't know about this. I didn't sign up for this. I thought being a Christian meant that I would just, you know, be living the high life. Get it? No. So it's going through those trials and still trusting God. It's going through those trials and not going to a place of relying on your senses, relying on you know, your education, relying on your experiences, relying on, you know, your ability to reason and to get yourself out of a situation, you know, is going through those trials and still being like, you know what, God, it's still just me and you. God, I am still completely depending on you. Um, you know, God, I, I, I'm walking by faith. I'm trusting you. There's things that I'm trusting you to do and I'm going to do my part, God, but I am trusting you completely to come through and to do your part as well. Um, that is that is the faith that comes from being um, from being tried, from going through various trials. Um, so that is where I want us to stop for today. Um, when we come back next time, we'll talk about belief versus unbelief. And I know that you're gonna be blessed by that. Um, so thanks again for tuning in and take care and God bless y'all.